Welcome to Enscape for Mac. In this introduction video to Enscape for SketchUp 2021 and 2022 on the Mac operating system, we'll cover how to open your SketchUp designs to review in a high quality visualization while you design on your Mac. We will explore the movement inside Enscape as well as the user interface both in SketchUp as well as in the Enscape window. We'll then move on to enrich your SketchUp scene with the Enscape material editor, lights and 3D assets before we will learn how to export your design as still image rendering, 360 degree panorama or as web standalone experience. So, let's have a look. First of all, Enscape is not a standalone software, it's a plugin. This means that even though the Enscape E icon may appear in your Apple dock at the bottom of the screen, you cannot start it from here. Instead, start SketchUp with any model of your choice. After Enscape was installed, you should find the Enscape toolset in its own toolbar floating above the SketchUp interface, as well as in the SketchUp menu under Extensions. To start Enscape from any given project, again, there are no further precautions necessary. You just click the Start Enscape button right here showing your design in a default empty scene, containing sky, sun and a floor which is infinitely far below. Now you can work in SketchUp like you're used to. Enscape will always show an accurate representation of your design. If you're working on just one monitor, it's probably best to align both windows next to each other. Play around for a bit you will notice that all changes are being synchronized, whether you model geometry, change the shadow settings, hide objects and so on. To move around in Enscape, there's a number of simple choices. First of all, the default navigation works with the WASD or the arrow keys. Press W or the up arrow to move forwards. S or the down arrow to move backwards, A and D or left and right to move left or right. Left click into the Enscape window and move the mouse while holding the left mouse button to look around. This will affect the direction you're moving in when pressing W or the up arrow. So try doing all at once. Hold the left mouse button, press W or the up arrow and move your mouse gently to change the direction you're moving into. If you feel like you're moving too fast or too slow, consider changing the movement speed in the Enscape window settings. You can access them in the top right corner of the Enscape window. To change the daytime in Enscape, Hold SHIFT and the right mouse button, then move the mouse. To look up all of these controls and many more, whenever you like, click the question mark button in the top right corner of the Enscape window. An even simpler option is this. You can just as well tell SketchUp to synchronize the camera movement into Enscape. Click the Synchronize Views button to toggle this option on or off. When enabled, you can just continue moving in SketchUp and Enscape will follow on the spot. One more option I want to discuss here is to just use SketchUp scenes. Any scenes you have set up in your design can be accessed directly in Enscape. For this, press the F key in the Enscape window or just click the View Management button. Clicking any of these views will move the Enscape camera to its location and also update the time of day and visibility settings to what's set in that particular scene. This way you can prepare a whole presentation in next to no time. To top things off, you can even connect visual settings presets to all these scenes to change automatically, but this is being covered in other lessons. Let's continue focusing on the basics for now. We'll keep exploring the user interface. 
Let's continue in the SketchUp part before moving to the Enscape window. We've already covered the Start Enscape and the View Synchronization button. Between the two is the Live Updates button. Using this, you can temporarily disable SketchUp from updating the changes you make to your model. This is great if you're planning to perform a number of changes that you want to update all at once, rather than dealing with a short loading time for every individual change. Click the button again to update the scene again. The Active Document button is used to switch between multiple open SketchUp models. The Enscape window needs to be opened just once, but you can review all currently open SketchUp designs this way. The Enscape Objects button, located below that, holds work items that Enscape adds to your SketchUp functionality. It currently holds just two objects, spotlights and rectangular lights. Use these to add artificial lighting to your scene, so when you switch to night, you're still able to see fine. To place an Enscape light in your SketchUp model, you'll need to click four times. Click the first time to select a surface you want to base the position of the light source off. Move the mouse away from the surface and click a second time to actually place the light source. Then you'll have to place a light target. Click a third time to pick a surface to place the light target relative to. The fourth click will place the light target. This is a regular SketchUp object now, so you can still move it copy it, etc. While the light object is selected, the Enscape Objects window changes to give you additional controls for this particular light. In case of this spotlight, you can now change the brightness by adjusting the luminous intensity. If you set it to a value that's high enough, you can see the light during day as well. You can also change the beam angle or add an IES profile to make things look more interesting. If you want to color the light, you can just use the SketchUp paint bucket to apply a color to the light object in SketchUp. Below the Enscape Objects button, you can find the Asset Library. This button opens a window that gives you access to thousands of optimized high-quality 3D models that you can place in your scene to quickly add detail for a lifelike presentation. To place assets, all you need to do is to select one, left-click it and left-click in your SketchUp scene where it's supposed to be placed. For easy navigation, use the search function, categories or tags to narrow down your search. To prevent the asset library from loading ever so often, consider clicking the Offline Asset Library checkbox, so everything stays stored locally on your machine. Below that is where you can find the Enscape Material Editor. This is one of the most important parts of the user interface. This is where we enhance our existing SketchUp materials with some of the detail work that makes the visualization truly realistic and emotionally powerful. Again, this tutorial is a bit too short to cover everything right here, but let's go over a quick demonstration to show you the power of this interface. Keep in mind, Enscape will only access the existing materials, they are called colors, in your project. If you want to create a new color material and apply it to a part of your design, you do all of that in SketchUp like before. You can then select the material from the list of materials on the left side of the Material Editor to edit it further. At the top you can pick from multiple material types, like grass and water, but for now we will stay in the generic type. You can get a number of interesting materials by editing the base attributes, like color, roughness or reflections, the metallic value or transparency. However, it really gets interesting when we involve image textures to control some of these attributes. Where to get image textures? Well, it's up to you. There are plenty of resources online to download textures from. 
If you don't know where to start, come with me to a site called www.ambientcg.com. Here you can pick from a large number of materials, which all are available for free under Creative Commons license. Download any material you want to go with. I recommend to download it in 2K resolution. That's a good rule of thumb for Enscape. This is really the same workflow for almost all materials. So you can copy this workflow for all of your designs. Once downloaded, open the folder you've received. We will find a number of image files of which we'll use three. Color, displacement and roughness. Grab these three files and store them somewhere on your machine. We'll now go back to the Enscape Material Editor. Make sure the material you want to edit is selected. Next, we'll connect the three textures to the individual attributes. Color goes into the albedo texture input. Press the folder icon to select the color texture image. Once it's connected, check the scale in Enscape. If it's not right, you can either edit the texture scaling in SketchUp or directly in the Enscape Material Editor. Click the blue texture name to open the texture editor. Here, enable Explicit Texture Transformation to be able to enter a size for your texture. Once the scale is right, click this arrow here to return to the main material interface. Next, we'll connect the Displacement Texture to the height map input. Again, click the right folder icon and select the displacement image file we've downloaded. By default, the image will be loaded in as a bump texture, which is awesome for any subtle detail, like wood, plaster and such. Do you see how nicely the detail now interacts with the lights and reflections? You can change the height map amount to make the effect stronger or more subtle. Oftentimes, the best results are really subtle here. If instead you want to go for a really strong surface deformation, change the mode from bump map to displacement map. This effect is much more pronounced, so again, you might want to dial down the strength, but you see the potential, right? This is what will really get a viewer to imagine what it feels like to be in that place. Lastly, let's also connect the reflections texture. It will control the roughness of a surface. This effect is not as strong as the height map, so I'll remove the color and height input for now so you can see what it is doing. The roughness manages how reflective a surface is. So, again, we get a lot of subtle detail that just adds to make a scene really believable. Cool, right? Now that we've set up lighting and materials, let's switch to the Enscape user interface for now to learn how to share your design. Currently in Enscape for Mac, you can export your model in three ways. Still image rendering, 360 degree panorama or web standalone. The three buttons to do that are found here. You can just click each one to start the export. But let's prepare a bit before doing so. For a still image, you might first want to change the resolution. You can do that in the visual settings, which can be found here in the top right corner of the Enscape window. The Output tab is where you can change the resolution, the image file format, additional passes to be exported and so on. Let's close the visual settings for now. We can enable the Save Frame option to see the extents of our image to be generated. Use this to set up the perspective you want to go with. Tip! If you are in a closed room and don't seem to have enough space to get just the right view for your export, change the field of view angle. You can find it back in the visual settings. If it's grayed out, it's because you're synchronizing the camera from SketchUp. Disable the view synchronization and you'll be able to edit the field of view. Zoom out a bit and you should be able to frame every scene just fine. Alternative types of perspective include a two-point perspective and an orthographic perspective. But let's stick with the default perspective for now. Adjust your position accordingly. Lastly, 
let's use shift and the right mouse button to change the daytime, so the sunlight, or artificial light if you choose night, play an interesting role in the picture. Before hitting export, we might want to save the location, in case we want to make additional renderings from this perspective in the future. Click the View Management button and select Create View at the bottom. This will create a new scene in SketchUp from the current perspective, saving the time of day as well. While we are at it, let's return to our visual settings one more time. Maybe you want to edit some of them and see what your image looks like in various conditions. Maybe change the cloud density or add some outlines for an abstract look. Or go to the Sky tab to pick a more interesting horizon source. I like to add a little depth of field to the image. To do this, enable depth of field in the main tab. Once it's enabled, you can disable autofocus to fine-tune the distance at which the image will be the sharpest. I feel like this gives the image the final touch. Okay, feeling good about your image? Then let's press the rendering button. Enscape will ask you where to save the image. Pick a location and you'll have the finished picture within a few seconds. Want to share a 360 degree panorama with your audience instead? Just use the button right next to it. Enscape will generate it from the position you are at, so maybe you want to move a little further towards the middle of the room for that. Once the panorama has been generated, you can find it in your Manage Uploads interface. It can be found right here, back in the SketchUp toolbar. While you can use this interface to save the panorama as regular image file, it's much more convenient to share it using the Enscape Cloud. Click this button to upload it. Once it's up there, click this button to open it in your browser. Or click the three dots for further options. Copy the direct link or copy a QR code that can be scanned with your mobile phone right away to review it there. There's another tab in this Manage Uploads interface, which is referring to the web standalones you can generate from Enscape. To do this, just press the last of our three export buttons. The standalone will be uploaded automatically and can be accessed through that link. This ends our brief overview of Enscape for Mac. We hope you enjoy working with Enscape in this new environment. If you run into issues, feel free to reach out to us using the feedback button or visit us in the forums at forum.enscape3d.com. Also, thank you for using Enscape.